look at that. Another beautiful day to do some scrapping. All right, today, guys, I am scrapping this. This is a Makita drill. I plugged her in, I tried it. I got tons of cordless drills anyways, and I have good drills with cords on that still work. This thing, it has a vacuum cleaner cord on it. It says Kawasaki on it. That obviously doesn't go with this drill. And it's, you can tell it's been modified, taken apart. The thing's a million years old. It was blue at one time, it looks like. The guy painted it. So let's get our before weight. Three and three quarter pounds. And let's start scrapping her. Oh my goodness. What do you put that screw back in there? I don't even know if I don't even know if this is out all the way yet. Sounds like it's out. It's out. There's no screw in there. There we go. We are in. Yeah, I'm scrapping it. So this is usually a greasy mess. But um any steel that's over half inch thick, I forget the technical term for it, um it's worth more at my scrapyard. Steel that's over half inch thick. They call it a uh, heavy melt. So I'm just gonna throw that in my tin pile anyways. But I could put it in a separate bucket and get you know, 12 cents a pound for instead of the eight cents a pound. So was this a vacuum cleaner cord? I don't think, I don't think Makita would have no, I guess Makita had a Kawasaki cord. So I got some copper bearing, the switch. There's another switch here. There's probably brass and stuff inside of here. I'm just going to get copper bearing price for it. Cut my wires nice and short. Some more copper bearing. And these ends here on the bre on the copper... Number two insulated, these ends, these are always brass. Well, almost always brass. There's some brass. What's holding my motor in? There's a brush. Brush housing are usually, usually got brass in them. That one's plastic. And there's the uh, commuter. This is where the brushes ride. Um, I'm gonna get electric motor price for this. 35 cents a pound. And some plastic. Take care of this. Now I have a like a box full of these things. I've been saving them forever. I'm not gonna save this one. I'm gonna leave it on the cord to make the cord a little heavier. <laughs> so I got some number two insulated. Give me number two price for that. And my brass plug ends. Now I'm using these to pull, not to cut. So that way I get the whole thing. Get my number two copper and my brass. So these I'm going to throw my number two copper, even though it's bright, but it's got that little piece of brass on it. I'll leave the little piece of brass on it to kind of hold it together. So I'm going to throw those in the number two copper bucket. I got some more number two insulated. Another little brass end. I 
Now brass is a little bit harder of a metal than copper. So you want to kind of try to avoid cutting the brass because it's just going to make your pliers dull. Make your cutters dull. And for this motor, I like to take a small nip into it first and like kind of inspect it. Because I can still get electric motor price for this. You know, if I put this back in here, it'll still give me electric motor price for this. But if it's aluminum, I don't even want to waste my time with it. But that's copper. What in the world do they got going on here? There we go. These are simple enough. I'm actually going to cut this whole side right off. I'll cut it on both sides. Now I'm sure there are easier ways of doing this, but I like using just basic hand tools to do everything because then you're not wasting electricity and, you know, because then you're, now you're paying to fix broken tools and you're paying for new bits and you're making less money by using power tools. But with hand tools, you're saving all that extra money. Come on. 10. Actually, that was kind of soft. It bent a lot easier than 10. But there's rust on it, so that tells me it's steel. Is this going to pull out nice for me now? So the piece of tin off. Not too bad, not too bad. Oh, I keep forgetting. This works better as a hammer. Probably should have left these other ends on, would have came out a little easier. Because they're kind of wedgerated in there. I always get my copper out. This one's out. Get this side out. Simple little twisting action. Thought I was going to lose it there. It's almost time for a new pair of channel locks. Got that side. They keep adjusting on their own, and that's not good. I don't like that. Go on this side's out. There, not too bad. Now I'm going to put it up on the scale. I'm going to find out how much we got. Um, there's some screws and such here. Right off the bat, so now it weighs 292. All we do is get rid of the plastic and that little handful of screws. So, for number two copper or number two insulated, a little over half a pound goes in that barrel. Got my electric motor, about half a pound. Copper bearing barely even registered. There's some copper bearing, electric motor. And I got a little pinch of brass, which won't I know it won't register. Before I don't want to drop my copper on the floor. And I got a, a tenth of a pound of copper. Now people think I'm crazy, but this stuff adds up fast. Look at that, my buckets. My bucket's uh, three quarters full already. Stuff fills, adds up quick. 
And this stuff is called heavy melt. A little over a pound and a half. Heavy melt's worth about 12 cents a pound, but I'm just gonna get eight cents a pound. I don't wanna waste my time with separate buckets. So not too bad, not too bad. Couple minutes worth of work. Make a couple bucks. Easy money. So just remember guys, scrap is everywhere. All you gotta do is find it, sort it, and hoard it. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.